Guys, good morning. Louis Santana on the Unscripted channel here for a new neat thing that we're going to be doing from now on. A lot of people know I love to cook. We used to have a gourmet foods company and they always ask me the same question. How do you eat on a budget? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make some amazing four minute ribeye steaks um, on a budget. So let's go. All right, guys, here we go. So real simply to do this, I'm going to be using a thin cut ribeye steak. I'm going to pop that right on the grill. Now, right before you uh, pop it on the grill, right, you decide what size you want. I'm kind of hungry this morning, so I'm going to get a bigger size. Um, these are really fantastic because they don't weigh, uh, you know, they don't cost a whole lot. But here's the cool thing about it is, see that beautiful marbling, that great delicious fat. It's going to be absolutely perfect for you. Great amount of protein. First thing I want to do to clarify my grill, I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice. That really does just clarify the grill, right? It makes everything taste absolutely amazing. Now, once I've done that, okay, I'm just going to pop my rib eye on just like that. You want to make sure that your grill is already fired up, super hot, ready to go, okay? Now, remember, you're going to leave it for a little bit, so that's a big deal, okay? So make sure everything gets set in there real well. While that thing's cooking, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and already do a jalapeno. I'd love to do a jalapeno with that. I'm going to push that aside, make sure i got room for the jalapeno. Now here's the magic, okay? Remember, four minutes, right? We've already fired up our panini grill. Now remember, this is food on a budget. You might not have a big stove. You might be in college. Panini grills are great. They use a lot of energy, but at the end of the day, you can stick them into just the regular outlet. It's pretty good. And yes, I do have to up my salt game. So... Um, I usually like Himalayan salt. I like to crack it myself. Today we're not doing that because again, remember it's food on a budget. Just gonna sprinkle it on there. Now remember, the idea behind that is, and you can see the jalapeno already dancing around, right? Is that you wanna just use a little bit of salt. Now one of the key things that I like to do too, I like to have my uh, steak medium rare. Big thing that I would wanna do right away is I'm gonna add some fresh garlic. I like that because I use it quite a bit. Now, you never want to overdo anything. Remember, in, in, when you're making food, it's all about balance, right? So we're going to start with a little bit of garlic just like that, very simply, and we're just going to spread it throughout, right? Just like that. See? Just like that. Boom. Just like that, right? We don't want to really pound the steak. We don't want to do anything wacky with it. We're just going to let it cook in its own thing. Now, one of the key things that I like to do also, once I've added my salt, once I've added my thing, um, I might go back over it with a little bit just because we spread that uh, garlic around. So it's a big deal just to add a little bit more salt. And again, you want to be really gentle with this process, right? Nothing tastes worse than a salty steak. All right, fantastic. Now that we got the garlic cooking on there, got it nice and simmering, all we're going to basically do is add a couple of packs of uh, delicious real butter. I never use margarine, right? Margarine's made out of plastic. I am never gonna use real margarine. So this is actually extra creamy butter uh, that I like to use. It's unsalted. And there you go. We're just gonna let it ride for just a couple minutes, right? The big thing about it is, guys, when you're doing this, just let it do its thing. Don't mess with it. Oh yeah, that's looking fantastic. So, we're going to let that ride for just a second. The important thing is, you always want to keep your hands clean. So that's what I'm doing right here, making sure my hands are clean. Now, I'm only going to do one flip, right? Again, remember, the idea is you don't want to press the steak down. Whether you're doing a thick cut ribeye or you're doing a thin cut ribeye, remember, you don't want to press it down. You're going to take it just like this, right? Very quickly, boom, pop it over. Now, make sure that butter is trapped underneath. Look how beautiful that's coming out already. Now, for me, especially when I'm working a panini grill, you know, the big thing is with the ribs, you know, I like to leave some of that stuff on there. I'll scrape it down periodically, make sure that it's clean, right? But remember, you wanna mimic what's happening on your outside grill. Your outdoor grill isn't gonna be sparkling clean. And the reason why you don't wanna do that is because you remove a lot of flavor. I know guys that are out there that they'll go ahead and they'll polish that, you know, grill up. And what happens is you end up getting these really normal flavored meats, right? They just don't have any flavor. Sometimes your previous stuff that you've cooked on there, when you scrape it off and you clean it up really good, 
It's going to be clean for you, but you're also going to add this really tremendous amount of flavor. So now we got the jalapeno going. One more pat of butter on top. Um, I won't do uh, so much garlic per se, right? Again, I just like to push it off like that because here's my thing, right? I don't want to touch my steak too much. I don't want to mess with it. I do want a little bit of butter to just be jumping on that thing. Now here's my thing. Again, we've already got a garlic on one side. We don't want to over garlic it. Now remember though, because salt is more of a dry spice, we're gonna just pop a little bit of salt on there as well. Just a little bit, just a very tiny amount. You just want to balance that flavor because remember, what's happening is, is the flavor of the meat, right? Remember one flip, we've got our jalapeno going and we're already almost ready to go, right? Again, I'm not, I want this thing to cook forever. Now, if I was doing a cookout and I would leave these guys on for a lot longer while I'm getting ready for my steaks, but take a look at how amazing that is, right? Now, remember, it's thin cut. It's not going to require a lot of time. All right, we are just about ready to go. Remember, it's four minutes. If y'all are in a college dorm, you guys are hanging out, you want to press someone, check it out. This is how you're going to do it. Bada boom, bada bang. There you go. That is an amazing four minute steak right there. You have all that delicious garlic going. Now here's the funny thing. You can do a couple things. There's these amazing little tools that come with these panini grills, right? And you can do a couple things. You can scrape it back. You can scrape it together. You can bring it off, right? And all of that's going to be flavor. Okay. Now, some of the people, you know, folks that I see, they'll do a dirty steak, right? So that means that they're going to grab all of that deliciousness, pour it right back over your steak, right? So take all of that right there, that delicious, already grilled and sauteed garlic, put it right over. You could do that if you want. You don't necessarily have to. But ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That is the four-minute steak. All right, four-minute steak. <laughs> we are ready to eat. Bon appétit.